Broke team, G. Broke team. Broke team. Exactly, we're the broke team. We're here to ride. Broke team. Broke team. BT, BT. Shout out, hey, shout out Dante Bison Nation, baby. My man, my man. What happened with Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? Boy, it seems like the news just keeps getting worse and worse for Triple G. Gennady Golovkin, who's scheduled to return in June on zone, he actually turned down a title shot against Demetrius Andrade, a fight where he would have got paid more money. He turned that fight down to pursue a fight with Brandon Adams. But that plan backfired on Golovkin because in a genius move, Jamal Charlo and Al Heyman, they snatch Gennady Golovkin's opponent. Now, the reason why I say it's a genius move is because we all know Gennady Golovkin has been ducking Jamal Charlo for almost two years now. He's been avoiding that fight. So basically, Jamal Charlo says, okay, well, if you're not gonna fight me, Golovkin, I'll snatch your opponents. Golovkin was trying to cherry pick as he always does, and that cherry got snatched right out of his hands. And see, the thing is, when it comes to Jamal Charlo, it really doesn't matter who Jamal Charlo fights because we already know Charlo wants to fight Canelo and Gennady Golovkin, right? We know that. We know when it comes to Gennady Golovkin by way of contrast, Golovkin wants no parts of Jamal Charlo. Golovkin was ordered by the WBC to fight Jamal Charlo so that he can get a third fight with Canelo Alvarez, he turned down that fight. Even before he was ordered to fight against Jamal Charlo, Jamal Charlo was his mandatory and he was still avoiding Jamal. He decided to fight Avanis Monterosian. Once again, Golovkin took a pay cut because Golovkin would have got paid way more money fighting against Jamal Charlo than fighting against Vinus Monterosian. So when a fighter is willing to take a pay cut not to fight someone, you know that is the complete art of ducking. Now get this guys, it turns out Brandon Adams, he explained why he decided to fight against Jamal Charlo as opposed to fighting Gennady Golovkin on the zone. Brandon Adams said that Al Heyman gave him a better financial deal than the zone did to fight against Gennady Golovkin. This is further proof that Golovkin would have got a huge payday if he would have fought against Jamal Charlo. But once again, he don't want no smoke. The boy don't want no smoke, and he never did. He never did. But this is not the first time that Gennady Golovkin was eyeing a cherry pick and his plans got ruined. Because if you guys recall, when Jamal Charlo or at least when the WBC ordered Golovkin to fight against Jamal Charlo. Of course, he wasn't going to fight Jamal. So Golovkin, he then tried to pursue a fight against Murata, Japanese Murata. Murata, he ended up losing to Rob Brandt, a fighter trained by Derek James. Once that happened, Gennady Golovkin, he didn't know what to do. All he knew is he wasn't getting in the ring with nobody that would most likely beat him which is a Jamal Charlo or Demetrius Andre. I'm telling you guys right now, Gennady Golovkin is not doing himself any favors. He's making his entire career look like a joke. He has a six fight deal with zone, or at least that's what's in the works. And outside of Canelo Alvarez, I'm assuming zone is gonna force him to get in the ring with some of the toughest fighters in the middleweight division. At least that would seem to be the smart move from the zone if they care about the boxing fans and if they want to do big numbers on the zone. They're going to have to put Gennady Golovkin in there with the likes of a Demetrius Andre, Danny Jacobs. If they can work out a deal with Charlo to cross over to the zone, they're going to have to put Golovkin in with opponents like that. And I know fans, Golovkin fans, they're shaking in their boots right now, saying, no, 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 please. Please don't put Golovkin in there with those monsters because he will probably lose. 
And you know it's a shame when even Golovkin's fans don't even have confidence in him. They just want him to win, regardless who he fights. But they don't want him to be put in there with someone that even they believe he will probably lose to. That means deep down these Golovkin fans, they all know what time it is. But they just happen to like this guy because he's on the hope list. And it's funny because speaking of liking this guy, the last video I did where I was talking about Gennady Golovkin once again, trying to avoid champions like Demetrius Andrade and mandatories or previous mandatories like Jamal Charlo. And I was completely debunking any excuse that you would use to try to defend Gennady Golovkin. It got to the point to where these Golovkin fans, they had no rebuttal. So they start saying in the comment section, hey man, I don't care what you say, I love Gennady Golovkin. And that's all is to it. You're not gonna stop us from liking him. You see how these fans, they completely tell on themselves? This was never about boxing. This was never about them wanting to see the best fights. When they say stuff bad about a fighter on the coincidental list, now we know they're proving that this was all about who they like and who they personally don't like. They're in the comment section admitting, hey man, I don't care what he does, no matter what you say, I still like him. But when it comes to a fighter on the coincidental list, these are the same fans that'll say, hey man, get off of so-and-so's dick. I mean, they're basically playing the race card, the real race card, making this all about race and telling you they don't like these black fighters. I mean, it's basically like calling you an N-word lover. When these decals say something like, hey man, we know you just love that Andre Ward, that Floyd Mayweather, Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, Tank Davis, the Charlo brothers, Shakur Stevenson, Deontay Wilder, Demetrius Andre, Danny Jacobs, and the list goes on and on and on. But then they turn around and they openly say, hey man, no matter what you say about Golovkin, we love him. So we know what time it is. Everything I tell you guys on this channel, it always comes to fruition. It always comes to light. Coincidentally, the name of the beat that's playing right now is called Love. Yeah, there in the comments, they said, I don't care what you say about Golovkin, we still love him, right? Once again, this proves it doesn't matter with fighters on a coincidental list, from Errol Spence to Terrence Crawford to Floyd Mayweather, Andre Ward, this proves it doesn't matter who they fight. It doesn't matter who they fight. It doesn't matter who they knock out. It doesn't matter how good they look. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, when it comes to fighters on a hope list like Canelo or Gennady Golovkin, it doesn't matter how many fighters they avoid. It doesn't matter how bad they look. Their hope insurance will cover everything that they do in the ring and even outside the ring. And yet once again, these are the fans that expect black folks to go out of their way and just say good things about the fighters that they like when they ain't never got nothing positive to say about any of these black fighters. You must be out of your damn mind. I'm gonna give these fighters credit when they deserve the credit. I'm not gonna give them credit they don't deserve just to make a bunch of racists feel better. You got it completely twisted. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. I'm gonna drop another video right after this and talk about Golovkin's next potential opponent that's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one.